Okay, now that we have done all topics covering sole trader, partnership, company, we can now move towards incomplete records. Now, what is incomplete records about? So we've seen the double entry system where a business is completely recording all the transaction. Over here, what happens is sometimes businesses which can be of small scale as well, they cannot afford or do not get into the process of recording transactions. So they do not perform the usual double entry system due to which we can draw a simple trial balance. So for such businesses, they will have incomplete records, which is the method of recording transactions that aren't based on the double entry model. So we will not have the double entry system over here, but we will have to use these transactions to prepare an income statement to calculate the profit or loss and also draw the statement of financial position. So we will have to use the given data over here in order to calculate all the missing items such as sales, purchases, etc. All right, but the basic logic should stem from the fact that number one, we should use the accounting equation. Remember what the accounting equation says. It says that capital can be calculated as assets minus liabilities. So our basic accounting equation was that assets are equal to capital plus liability. Now you would know the list of assets. The, the firm can give you information about the list of assets. The firm can give you information about the list of liabilities. We will use that to calculate our capital, which is assets minus liabilities. So we can use the simple equation that for capital, opening capital, the capital at the start of the year, plus any capital invested will be added to it. Plus the profit for the year increases your capital, whereas drawings should decrease your capital. And that should give you your closing capital over here. So remember this equation for calculating our closing capital. Okay, one more thing to note, profits obviously increase your capital, whereas losses should reduce your capital. So over here, if you have a profit, your capital will increase. If you have a loss, it should reduce. And the difference between your opening capital over here and the difference between closing capital should also be adjusted for the new capital introduced and owner's drawings should reveal the profit or loss. So sometimes what can happen during MCQs is that they can give you information about opening capital. This figure will be given. You can also calculate your closing capital. You will know your additional capital and drawings will be given. So you will have to use this in order to, to calculate your net profit. So this figure might be missing. Let me highlight this. The net profit might be missing over here. So our job will be to rearrange this equation in order to calculate the net profit. All right, so we will obviously solve some MCQs later. Over there, we will also take a look at this. Okay, so now let's start with the workings for incomplete records. So I will, I will do this step by step. So the first step for an incomplete record situation where information is missing is that we have to calculate our sales. All right, so the first thing that we need to find is our sales. So I can write this equation that total sales or sales for a business is made up of cash sales, sales that was sold on cash and credit sales. All right, so you guys should also record this that the first thing that we need to calculate is our sales, which is made up of cash and your credit sales over here. Okay, now for cash sales, I will draw a simple cash account. I'll just show that right now. And for credit sales, we will draw the sales ledger control account. Okay, now let's recap the sales ledger control account and let's take a look at the cash account. Okay, so let's recap the sales ledger control account first. We will use this account to calculate our credit sales. So remember we had our opening trade receivables. Receivables should come on the debit side trade receivables for them what we need to remember is that your trade receivables will increase from the debit side and they will decrease from the credit side so over here that's your opening trade receivables and that's your closing trade receivables they should be entered over here okay now what are we looking for we are looking for this figure this figure credit sales is missing so let me highlight this again so that we remember this this figure is missing 
Okay, after that, you will have the bank figure. So the, so the bank account should be given. You should be able to calculate receipts from trade receivable. The discount allowed figure, sales return, they all decrease your trade receivable. Any bad debts, they will also decrease your trade receivable. And closing trade receivable will be given. Now over here, using the sales ledger control account, our job is to calculate this missing figure, which is credit sales. Right, so using the sales ledger control account, we can find the missing information, credit sales, in a, in a question for incomplete records. Okay, now what about cash sales? How should a cash account look like? Let's take a look at that as well. Okay guys, now your cash account. Cash account is basically for businesses that would maintain a balance of cash. So now remember, cash is also your asset. So again, asset increases from the debit side, it decreases from the credit side. Okay, so I can say that's my opening cash over here and that's my closing cash. Now cash sales should be an inflow over here. So this figure cash sales again becomes an inflow. And as a result, it should go on the debit side of the cash account and this is actually our missing figure as well. So let me highlight this again. That is my missing figure too. Okay, now what will businesses do? Businesses usually receive cash sales and they will bank a certain amount in the bank account. So what will happen is this figure shows that some of the cash has been banked. So just to explain this better, I can say that they will deposit this money in the bank. So my bank account should be debit since bank increases, but my cash account should be credit because cash decreases. So as a result, when you look at the bank account and you see some cash which has been deposited in the bank, that can be called cash banked and it should go on the credit side of the cash account. Any cash expenses paid will decrease your cash. Any cash drawings will also come over here and that's your closing cash. So again, using this account, we need to find this missing figure, which is cash sales. All right, I hope you guys have copied down the cash account and the SLCA. Using this, we have now calculated our missing figure, credit sales and our cash sales. Okay, so after calculating sales, let's move to step number two. Step number two is we need to find our cost of goods sold. Now for cost of goods sold, again, our missing figure will be credit purchases. Remember, it's a small sole trader or a small partnership that does not have sufficient resources to record the total amount of sales or the total amount of credit purchases made. So again, your credit purchases will be missing. For that, we will draw the purchase ledger control account. Just like for credit sales, we drew the sales ledger control account. For credit purchases, we will have to draw the purchase ledger control account. Okay, if the inventory figure is missing, we, we will have a separate video on that where I will explain, but, but for now I'm assuming the inventory figure is given, but your credit purchases are missing. So let's take a look at your purchase ledger control account. Okay, so your purchase ledger control account, remember is a record of your trade payables. Trade payables are your liability. So liability increases from the credit side and it decreases from the debit side. Okay, so opening trade payables will go over here and this should be your closing trade payables. Now the figure that is missing, what we're looking for is your credit purchases. This figure is missing. So again, let me just highlight this so that we remember this. All right, now bank, any payments made to trade payables will decrease your liability. So they should be recorded on the debit side. Any discount received, any purchase return will all be recorded on the debit side. And using this account, we have to calculate this missing figure, which is credit purchases over here. All right, so now our use of control account is being applied over here where we calculated sales, especially your credit sales through the sales ledger control account and your credit purchases through the purchase ledger control account. Okay, now let's take a look at the next step. I hope you guys have copied this down. 
So once we're done with the upper half of our income statement, which is sales and cost of goods sold, we now need to look at our expenses. All right. So expenses will obviously have adjustments for prepaid and accruals. Our job is to calculate the actual amount of expenses. So a very useful account, I would say that we can draw for expenses is an expense account, which would record all prepaids and accrual. Let me show that as well. Okay, so for the expense account, we can say any expense prepaid is an asset for the business. So remember, it should come on the debit side and any expense accrued at the start of the year is a liability. So it should come on the credit side over here, right? So prepaid expense goes on the debit side, accrued expense goes on the credit side over here. Okay, similarly, that's your closing expense prepaid. And that's your closing expense accrued. Okay. Now next the bank, any amount of expense paid. So remember we, we do the simple double entry for expense paid. We would say that our bank account should be credit since we're paying any expense and expense account should be debit because the nature of an expense account is also debit, right? So expense should be debit. So over here we will record the amount of expense paid, it should go over here. And now using this, our job is to find this missing figure. That's your income statement figure. This is the actual amount of expense incurred in the year. So let me also highlight this. So this account should be very handy and everyone should learn how to draw this account so that we calculate the actual amount of expense incurred in the year, which will go to the income statement. All right. So now we've also learned how to draw the expense account. Let's move forward to some other calculations. Okay. Now, once we're done with our expenses, we should now also learn how to calculate our depreciation. Yeah. So to calculate depreciation, we can use a simple net book value account or use this equation, which is under the revaluation method. All right. So very often these businesses would not have resources to employ the straight line method or the reducing balance method, but they would rather just keep a track of their opening and closing net book value. So we can use this equation and I'll also do an example where we can say when we start the year with our opening net book value of asset, any asset purchased will be added to it any assets sold will be subtracted from it, everything at the net book value. And using the closing net book value, we can calculate our depreciation expense. Okay, now how do we use this equation? Let's take a look at an example. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. Now, if I say that when the year started, a business had net book value worth $10,000, during the year, the business acquired 5,000 worth more of non-current assets. They also sold off a non-current asset with net book value of 2,500. Now, this is a very basic example. I've already given you the disposal net book value. At times, this is not available. And at the end of the year, the business is saying the non-current assets have a net book value of 11,000. Now, our job is to calculate the depreciation. Now, how do we do that? So now what I can say is we started the year with $10,000 worth of asset. We bought a new asset worth 5,000. So let me add that we sold one asset, which had a net book value of 2,500. So this should give us 12,500, right guys. Okay. Now at the end of the year, your non current assets are worth 11,000. So I can say from 12,500, our non-current assets have decreased to 11,000. So that's the depreciation or a loss in your non-current assets worth $1,500. So we have used this equation to calculate depreciation. So for many businesses and for some questions coming up, we will use this equation to calculate the depreciation expense. So I will solve a question on incomplete record in the next video we where we will learn all these calculations, whether to calculate sales, purchases, adjust expenses, depreciation, calculate your opening capital using asset minus liability equation.